How's it going wood turners and wood turner wannabes? Today's project is going to be a wood kitchen scoop. And since I'm wearing my Bob Ross pin, and I got to show you this, there's Bob Ross. In that case, they're going to be happy little kitchen scoops. Anyways, let's get started. To make this project, I have a piece of honey locust that is from a neighbor's tree that went down in a windstorm. You notice that the pith is off to the side. I don't want that in the center, so I'm going to just eyeball that and keep that away from the center. And then with a spindle roughing gouge, I'm going to remove the bark and take it down to round. Now I should have measured, I started cutting a tannin, and then when I put the calipers on there I found out that it was already the correct diameter, so I just put a dovetail on the end. Now set that dovetail in the chuck loosely and bring the tail stuck up so you can fully center that before you tighten up the jaws on the chuck. Just by eye I'm going to measure out where I want the scoop to be and where I want the handle to be and then I'm going to true up the end. It really helps to think of this project as a series of steps. So first I'm going to shape the outside of the scoop with a spindle gouge and I'm going to stop there. Next, before I move on to the handle, while the wood is still stable, I'm going to do some end grain hollowing. And I'll start in the center and work my way out to the rim. And I'm going to set the wall thickness before I go too deep. I'm aiming for a wall thickness of about an eighth of an inch or less. So gradually I'll work with my spindle gouge and then with a round scraper just to get that wall thickness evened out. Okay, and I decide to set the depth all the way down with a drill bit, which is something you can do first, but I did a little bit later. So measure, and I put a piece of tape on there to know when to stop, and one all the way down to the bottom. And I got out my Sorby hollowing tool just to help a little bit, and it wasn't quite enough, so I moved into my very rigid homemade round scraper. If anyone out there knows of a good hollowing tool that will help me do this all in one step, let me know and I can do it when it's in the budget. So I'm just going to check the wall thickness and it's pretty consistent all the way through. Then on to the sanding before we cut the handle so that we make sure it's really stable. It's a little bit hard to reach to the inside, but it's worth it to do it now rather than try and do it after you cut the scoop already. Now I brought the tailstock up for support and it has a cone center in it. If you don't have a cone center, you can always cut your own piece to fit the end just to help support it while you remove this wood. Now that the scoop is set, the next step is to work on the handle. So what we're going to do is work our way down little by little, just removing a little material at a time. And that way we don't have any excess vibration or anything like that. On most projects I have a little bit of an idea of what I want the shape to look like. But for this handle I really didn't so it kind of came about on its own. I started to make a ball on the end and decided I didn't like that. Um, so it ended up looking somewhat like a bee stinger. So I went with that. When I think of a bee's hindquarters, I think of the stripes. So I put in some grooves and I lay a wire in there to wire burn the stripes. Before you get too thin on the end, it's a good idea to do the sanding. And I started with 120 grit and went to 220 grit. Now with a parting tool and a skew chisel, I'm going to work that down and refine the end of the handle and keep going thinner until I can cut it off with a saw. I don't want it to part all the way off on its own. After a little hand sanding on the end, it's time to cut out the opening of our scoop. So I'm just going to draw what I want that to look like. And then in a V-block for stability and holding onto the handle really tight, I run that through the bandsaw. The idea is to take away the top of the material, but leave enough material at the bottom so that you can scoop with it. To clean up your bandsaw cut, it helps to have something like a belt sander with a curved end so you can get into the inside of that curve and smooth everything up. 
a little hand sanding on the edges helps to ease those over and make them so they're not so sharp. The very last thing is to wet that puppy up with a bunch of mineral oil. And I like using mineral oil because it brings out the color and it's a food safe finish. Okay, here is our happy little kitchen scoop. I hope you have this much fun turning in your own shop. On this channel, I do a lot of videos focused on wood turning. If you haven't subscribed already, it's time. And remember to put your smile on, and we'll see you soon.